so uh, last time we started with uh, uh, logistic regression and we will continue with the logistic regression uh, only and then we will look for a program uh, based on logistic regression and we will try to implement logistic regression for a specific data set all right so briefly i will go through the uh, notes right so these are the equations for um, simple linear regression multiple linear regression and polynomial uh, regression right though i did not cover the polynomial regression um, i did not explain the code but the code is very simple i will share the code with you uh, so if you have a data these uh, crosses are actually the observed values of the data and the same example we took for the case of uh, simple linear regression the salary and the experience and this line the goal of the regression is to find the best fit uh, line which actually uh, which uh, best fitting line uh, to you know uh, so that the data uh, so that it can model the data uh, to uh, to you know with less errors right uh, but we were talking uh, in the case of logistic regression we were talking about this kind of data right so where there is a uh, the data pertains to um, yes or no kind of answers right so if the age is there and some action is to be performed based on the age right uh, maybe uh, a customer who we are studying the customers uh, whether they will purchase the product or not depending on the age right and uh, so it's a kind of yes or no decision so one is basically representing the yes decision and zero is representing the uh, no decision so it is very difficult you know to model this data using uh, simple linear regression uh, that i uh, that's how i have uh, shown here uh, that if you try to fit the uh, fit a line to model this data so it doesn't look like the best approach all right and the best approach was that you just uh, uh, suppose y equal to b not plus b1 x1 is the equation of the line uh, you take a sigmoid function where p is equal to p represents the probabilities right so uh, in the linear in the in, in this case uh, there is a, there are two decisions yes or no but we will work with the probabilities that what is probability of having what is the probability of a certain age of a customer that he will be buying the product right to uh, extend that idea uh, we will use the sigmoid function where p is the probability and the formula is given by 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus y once we substitute y here we get this equation so the when we plot the equation it turns uh, it takes a this kind of shape correct so basically this this is uh, this will give you the probabilities of uh, 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 for a certain age what is the probability of buying the product but we have to actually you know uh, make a decision whether the customer has purchased or not so in that case what we will do is that we will take a 0.5 threshold value if the probability is more than 0.5 we will say that the customer will purchase if it is less than 0.5 we will take it to we will project it to the x axis and we will say that he will not purchase the product right so it's a kind of classification happening here logistic regression will basically do the classification uh, classification of two classes and the classes are the product is not purchased and the product is purchased based on the probabilities of course so right if you do so that's the kind of uh, theory behind the uh, logistic regression but let's now look at the uh, code and the data set all right 
Let me just stop sharing this and So this is, let me explain the data set that I will, I'm taking for logistic regression. The data set is basically uh, age, basically uh, based, it is based on the customers, whether they will purchase the product or not. So two features uh, we have uh, taken. One is the age, the other is the uh, estimated salary. So, uh, this zero or one, they represent whether the customer has purchased or not, right? So we will, based on, so how many entries are there? Around 400 entries are there for this uh, data set. So two features are there, one is age, one is the estimated salary and the decision about the, uh, whether the um, product is purchased or not, right? So this is again, let me now stop sharing and come back to the uh, Jupyter notebook. Okay, this is, then we will, so this is the code for, now this logistic regression is uh, another case of uh, supervised learning. Uh, probably I did not, uh, uh, explain the uh, supervised and unsupervised learning uh, initially. So supervised learning is where the uh, labeled data is available. What is labeled data? Just to you know, uh, give you an example. If you want to, uh, if you if you are going into the market to purchase a house, let's say, and you are looking for number of houses, but you know the prices of house, right? So once you know the prices of house already, and then you are searching for the house, so that's a kind of labeled data where you know the answers, right? Uh, where you know the, where the, the uh, that data is called the labeled data. And when you don't know uh, the prices of the house, for example, then that will be called as the uh, unlabeled data, right? So supervised learning will be uh, learning based when the data set will have the labeled data, an unsupervised learning will be the case when you don't have the um, labeled data. Both have advantages and disadvantages of their own. Once we move along with the algorithms, we will look into this aspect also. Correct. So uh, to develop the code for the log logistic regression, I have taken the uh, data set that I have just shown you, where the age of the, so, cell here, uh, it is data set. So this is our data set, correct? 400 entries are there. The data set contains the age, the estimated salary and the decision uh, whether uh, this, but for example, look at the first row, the age is 19, the estimated salary is 19,000 and whether the, uh, product is purchased or not. So it is zero here, so it's not purchased, right? The name of the uh, data set is social network ad because uh, why this name is particularly there? Because there will be some kind of ad based on um, the, uh, I mean, uh, so for certain, you know, a, there will be an ad on social media that uh, that will favor, that will explain the age and the estimated salary and the purchase. So th that kind of name is given. That, that does not matter. The name of the file can be anything. All right. So in this case, we will, as we know that, we will have to import the libraries and we need to import the data set. The same uh, code we can use. Then we have to uh, we have to, you know, uh, divide the, split the data set into training and test set. So test size, test set size used is 0.25. So that means uh, 300 entries will be there in the uh, training set. 
and uh, 100 entries will be there in the test set. All right, so this is our, uh, we can print various uh, variables that we have uh, taken, X train and Y train. X train is the um, training set matrix of features. X test is the test set matrix of features. Y train is the dependent variable for training set. Y test is the dependent variable for the uh, test set. So we can print, we can see all those things. Okay. Now we will have to do the feature scaling here. Why? Because if you look at the age and the uh, salary, so it, uh, the values are, you know, there's, a, there's quite a difference between the magnitudes of these values. So we'll have to scale the values. We know the code also. So we have to, uh, go for the scikit-learn library dot uh, let me i will i uh, i will just pause the explanation of this code i will stop sharing this and but i will and i will go to google so i just wanted to show one thing um, i'll explain let me okay, this is google so let me just share it first because um, you have to be uh, doing things, start doing things of your own. So this, I hope this uh, site, uh, the Google site is visible to you. So now what I want to show you here is the uh, scikit-learn API. So we will have to know that how uh, one, I'm I'm writing down the classes uh, um, in the code straightway, but we'll have to look at the scikit learn um, documentation also. So let's see. So the, when you will type, when you when you will try to browse scikit learn API, so you will see that uh, this link will appear. So if you click this link, this is a very useful link. So that's the uh, th this is the scikit. Uh, uh, API, scikit-learn API, uh, full reference handbook, right? Where the, and it explains all the classes which are available in the scikit-learn library. So for example, there is base class, there are functions available, and um, there is calibre clustering, there is a separate class for clustering. We will, when we will do the clustering, we will see this also. Then various functions are available. Uh, estimators are there, covariances you can calculate, right? And then cross, so you can uh, you can handle the data sets also using the sklearn library. Now, samples generator, then matrix decomposition you can perform and discriminant analysis when we will go for the uh, principal component analysis and the discriminant analysis, we will have to use these uh, classes also. Then there is ensemble methods we can um, uh, for getting the ensembled average of certain algorithms. Then experimental, so feature extraction. So let me just, so this is feature selection. Uh, okay, this is feature selection, Gaussian processes, impute function, impute class we have already used, if you remember for uh, taking care of the missing values. So this simple imputer class. So we created the impute object. So all kind of explanation is given on this uh, node. Uh, let me just scroll through. The uh, these are the linear models. Uh, for example, I will uh, today we will use the linear model. This is uh, the the you know the uh, uh, the syntax is you have to write from sklearn dot linear model linear model is the module and uh, scl uh, linear model and we have to import this class logistic regression right uh, this is the classifier and if you click this you will uh, if you click this you will find various arguments that need to be uh, you know put in for uh, for uh, making use of this class then uh, what else we have looked at? These are some linear models, uh, Gaussian generalized uh, for regression models. Then 
just model selection we have used model selection we have used already uh, the regression uh, matrix right so what i mean to say is that you need to you know uh, start look model selection we use uh, then all kinds of libraries are near, nearest neighbors we will use uh, when uh, this classification uh, algorithm uh, we will do so i will stop here my main purpose of showing this was that you have to uh, go through this node documentation to you know understand various uh, classes which are available in the scikit learn library okay so let's come back to the uh, let's this is logistic regression so let me share this okay so we need to perform the feature selection so let's do it we so the, you can see that uh, if you try to print the uh, training matrix of feature uh, for the training set you see all these values are scaled and even uh, you can check for the test values which are scaled right all these values are scaled now let's look at training the logistic regression model on the training set so let's train let's uh, do the logistic regression for the uh, training set as i just uh, showed you that you have to use the sklearn dot linear model module so the syntax is that from sklearn dot linear module import logistic regression class and you have to after importing the class you have to uh, create an object and the object created is classifier uh, use this class logis logistic regression and this and this parameter random state equal to zero this is for that uh, uh, whatever results i get here so you also get the same results because um, whatever the values will be placed in the training set uh, will be same for you also and for me also all right uh if you if you do this random state equal to zero so this is not a necessity once you try to implement the algorithm you can remove this also and you need to fit the uh, method then classifier dot fit so this is the logistic regression um, module created object created now let us try to predict a but uh, we will do the predict prediction of the test result we will try to predict the um results by inputting um x test which is the uh, yes somebody is raising hand uh, hello yes yes please uh, so wo wahan pe uh, jab aapne logistic regression use kiya to dot fit ke baad dot transform kyun nahi kiya because we are just we are we have only created the uh, See, we have only created the uh, logistic regression um, module okay. right so in that case you need not to use the transform method here just a minute let me just this is my file actually wait logistic Just give me a minute. Okay. Okay. File was. Give me a minute, please. Uh, are you able to see this screen? Yes. So. Wait. Yes, this one. Let me just go. Down. So you were asking about the okay. You were asking about this one. So here, you know, um, what we have done is by fitting, we have only uh, created the. I am using only the X train and Y train, just for training purpose. so classifier dot fit will actually create the classifier right use for the training set then after that i need to predict 
I, rather than transform function, I will use the predict function here to predict the values for the uh, x test. Is that clear? Uh, okay, sir. But जैसे जब हम scale कर रहे थे तो हमने fit के बाद transform किया. Because we अब... because we applied that on this data set. Fit will fit will <coughs> fit will try to calculate everything, right? Uh, where you see that's why I uh, took you to the Scikit Learn library. You just uh, open the Scikit on Google. uh right and then try to look for um the explanation for this logistic for this uh, fit method of uh logistic regression class just try to look for that and you will see that what functions it performs all right okay. so fit will create the classifier and then we will use this classifier and we will use the predict function of the classifier to predict the value we will predict for just look for this just look for this line of code uh, this is classifier dot predict we are using the classifier object predict function right and here we are using the transform if you see yes why we no but why we are using transform here because uh, if you see the uh, feature selection code in the feature selection code uh, this is okay this is feature scaled but now one minute i will just explain you what's the point that i'm trying to explain if you will see this code predicting the test results here you will see uh, it is classifier dot predict but here the transform is not used right because transform uh, on the test results have already been performed on the feature scaling but here i am using the transform why because i am i am taking the first value of the let me show you the value the first okay i am taking this value and if you can see the uh, the Uh, uh, where i have selected this line the first line of this uh, uh, print x test when i perform the feature scaling on x test it scaled the complete data but i want to know the result for this these values when the age was 30 and the salary was 87000 without scaling that in that case i have to perform here the scaling because i am trying to look at the prediction result for a single value right and as far as your question is concerned uh, you just check for the logistic fit method will create the uh, logistic regression the classifier for logistic regression all right hello yes uh, so, so the transform function is basically uh, basically changing uh, the values in the test data set yes so okay. but we are not changing the values here na we are only creating the object and the object okay. which, which, is, which is the classifier all right so transform function will do that scaling thing or wo uh, x test wali data set mein uh, जो वैल्यूज है उन्हें चेंज कर देगा उनको उनको चेंज कर देगा बट हेयर दिस प्रिडिक्टिंग ए न्यू रिजल्ट वन लाइन ऑफ कोड व्हिच इज देयर आई एम डायरेक्टली गिविंग द वैल्यूज 30 एंड 87000 बिकॉज़ दीस आर नॉट स्केल्ड दैट्स व्हाई आई एम यूजिंग दिस ऑब्जेक्ट एस सी डॉट ट्रांसफॉर्म टू स्केल द वैल्यू ओके गॉट इट गॉट इट विल यूज द प्रिडिक्ट फंक्शन राइट एंड इफ यू इफ यू विल रन दिस कोड ऑफ कोर्स आई हैव ऑलरेडी रन दिस कोड दैट्स व्हाई दिस रिजल्ट इज कमिंग but you can try at your end that when you will run this code the answer will be zero and you can check in your test data uh if you if you if you print the y test also this is y test 
it this first value is zero so that means the classifier that is created it is performing well all right and oh. after that if we try to predict the test for all the values of the test results then i am using the i am storing the values in ypred classify dot predict as it is used here but i will not use here the sc dot transform method because x test data is already transformed okay. and this concatenate function i explained you in the last class also because i want to uh, put this ypred the predicted values and the y test values side by side so that's why this concatenate uh, i will use the concatenate function of the numpy which will Uh, create and i will also use the reshape function which will create matrix which will create matrix uh, with one column so this is for one, one column right and the length of the uh, number of rows will be the length of the predicted uh, basically it will be 100 and for uh, test also it will be 100 now if you run this code you will see that and this one was there because there was horizontal this one this one is out of, this one is for concatenate function only this argument is the second argument this is the first argument of the concatenate function concatenate function and this one is the second argument and this argument is there is horizontal uh, concatenation horizontal value concatenation of horizontal values so this this zero is for the first zero is for Uh, y prime predicted value. The next zero is for the uh, for the test value, uh, test data set value. So if you will look, so it is making a mistake here, right? Otherwise, it is going all well. It is making a mistake here. Now, how many mistakes are made? uh in your when you uh, apply your data set that will that you can also know and the, the method to uh come to know about these things will be your uh, confusion matrix so you have to you have to get the confusion matrix okay, so okay anyway so how to get the what is confusion matrix and how to get the confusion matrix let us see that again uh, so confusion matrix is a matrix which will actually give you an idea that how many correct uh, predictions were made and how many uh, errors were made uh, and we can use the uh, we will use the uh, confusion matrix class from the uh, scikit learn library and you can uh, as i showed you you can go to the uh, documentation part of the scikit learn library uh, the code uh, says that from sklearn.matrix this from this module import the confusion matrix class and we will also import the accuracy score for the accuracy of the model all right so we will create the uh, cm which is the object of the confusion matrix class so the uh, arguments to be input for the uh, confusion matrix class are y test and y prime and if we print this confusion matrix uh, it will give this result now let me explain what these results are there will be two classes right the first class is uh, class 0 the second class is class 1 let's say so what is class 0 class 0 means the uh, the the product was not purchased right and the other classes product was purchased now what is this 65 65 tells me that 65 people did not purchase the uh, product right and the predicted value is also matching with the test test results so that means 65 nodes are there in the test data which our model predicted well and what is this 8 this 8 is actually the model predicted that these 8 bought the product but actually they did not buy the product 
the model predicted that they will buy the product, but actually they did not buy the product as per the test results. This 65, the first element in the first column is 65 people did not purchase the product as per test data. And our predicted data also says that 65 did not purchase the product. But what is this eight? This eight tells me our test data for these eight people tells us that they did not purchase the product. But the predicted value says that they purchased the product. So this is an error here. And what is this 24? This 24 tells me that the prediction made by the model says that they purchased the product, which matches with the test data. But what is this three telling me? This three tells me that prediction tells us that the product was not purchased, but actually this product was purchased. So column, this first column is for first class. These two entries are for the first class, that means class zero. And second column is the entry for the second class, that means class one. Class zero pertains to product did not, product was not purchased. Class one belongs to that the product was purchased. The first value matches with the prediction. The second, this eight value uh, is not matching with the, uh, the prediction is not matching with the actual value in the test data, right? So this is how you can, from the confusion matrix, because there are only 400 or 100 entries in the test data, but let's say there are 10,000 entries in the uh, test data. So you can make use of the confusion matrix to come to know that how many values were um, predicted correctly. And because we use the accuracy underscore score class, right? So, and we, uh, as an input, we provided these two arguments also then it predicted the accuracy to be 89% of this model. All right. Next thing that is available is the visualization of the test uh, training uh, results and test results. Actually, you can skip this portion also, uh, visualization, because, uh, you know, in actual machine learning models, uh, I am using here only two features, which is age and the salary. So this, yeah, this is age and the salary. Only two features are there and this is the dependent variable. But in actual machine learning models or in actual data sets, you, you have many more features, not only two more, uh, two features based on which the decisions are made. And this graph, this code that I'm using here is for the, uh, because I'm using two, in this graph, if you will see the x-axis contains age and the y-axis contains the estimated salary. So these are the, this is a graph between features, all right. And in practical scenarios, this type of graph will never be, because let's say if there are five variables, five variables in the matrix of features, so you won't be able to plot the graph on a 2D, uh, to the graph, to the plot, right? So this graph is only for this particular data set, but why I use this, I'm using this, this part of the code to tell you the importance of the linear classifiers and non-linear classifiers. So let us look at what I'm trying to say. So let's not worry about the code part much and uh, let's look at the results. So as I told you that the result, these results are between the two features, the age and the estimated salary. So this red portion is actually belonging to class zero. These dots are the customers. Red portion belongs to class zero and the green portion belongs to class one, as it is clear from this uh, legend. Now, because, and the important thing is this boundary. If you look at this boundary, the separation of the two classes is made by a straight line, a linear uh, separation is there. So that is why logistic regression 
is a linear classifier because the decision boundary is a linear uh, is a line which is dividing the uh, two classes right since uh, the two classes two features are so we we can plot the uh, we can have a 2d plot for this particular data set but if the more number of features are let's say if there are three features there are there then this uh, then the uh, decision bound, decision region will be a plane in that case all right and as you increase the number of dimensions as you increase the number of features uh, the it will be very difficult you know to talk about the visualization but uh, so what i am trying to explain what i was trying to explain here is that this red uh, color region is for class 0 the green color region is for the uh, class 1 and you see some of the red dots are in the uh, green region so that means uh, these are the so these represent the errors and if you will count these dots these will be equal to our confusion metric right and okay so this is for the this this uh, our confusion matrix that we uh, <coughs> got here was for the test data this uh, visualization is, is for the training data. Let's look at the test results. Same code for test results. And now you see that uh, this is 100, 100 customers' data. Uh, if you count the green uh, dot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And in our confusion matrix also, uh, Right, eight mis eight mistakes were there. Anyway, what I wanted to explain, what I I was uh, trying to explain you was that this is a linear classifier. Logistic regression is a linear classifier, whereas uh, the Oh, um, is when we will go for the when we will go for the decision trees right i will uh, uh, some time is there i will start with the decision trees so that will be a uh, non linear classifier what is non linear classifier uh, so these these red dots are falling in the green region so that means they, so instead of taking a linear uh, decision boundary what we will take in knowledge we will try to cover all the points right to have a nonlinear kind of decision boundary so that is why these classification algorithms are known as the nonlinear classifier but logistic regression is a uh, is a linear classifier all right so nothing to worry about these graphics up to the confusion matrix also we get everything then we can use the accuracy score to get the accuracy of the um, of the model because uh, this this data was having only two features so we could we could we, we could have uh, plotted but otherwise you know if the number of features are more it's not possible to plot it uh, so don't worry about it. so i will also share the code uh, without this uh, but i will share this no problem i will share the code with you with uh, graphics also but the point is that you need not to worry about the graph part and this part of the code because <coughs> this is a little typical kind <coughs> excuse me this is a typical kind of code so not required for this course all right so now what I will do is that this is logistic regression. I will stop sharing this and I will uh, try to explain the decision tree algorithm based on uh, an example that I have taken, right? There is my categorical data. Bhi ho sakta. Okay. Yes, me. Hello, district uh, wale mein, matlab, data set. Mein. No, whenever there is categorical data, you have to uh, uh, you have to do the one hot encoding. 
for the data you have to put the dummy variables so in that case okay. the, dummy, the value of the dummy variables is not important when there is categorical data and you encode it using one hot encoding right so the value that you are using for dummy variables does not uh, have any you know numerical importance uh, okay, do you remember sir. do you remember that part na huh? yes sir yes okay so let us start with the decision trees you must have studied decision trees in your data structures uh, class also so let me just do the full screen so this is the even the decision trees can be applied to classification and prediction and even for regression also we can apply the decision trees but i am not going into that part at present right so there are three types of nodes we will see that how we are creating the uh, decision trees the nodes are root node branch node and the leaf nodes there are two there are actually three uh, matrix right one is gini um, impurity or gini index also we will talk about the gini index uh, later but at present i am talking about the information gain and the entropy value in your information and communication theory you must know you must have studied what is entropy what is information gain it is a measure of how much information um, how much information uh, to a specific how much information um, is there in the answer to a specific question how much how uh, measure of how much information the the uh, it provides the answer provides to a specific question uh, I, i don't know how i have done this but anyway the question is that you ask a question you get an answer so how much information the answer uh, provides to you so that is the information gain and what is entropy it is measure of uncertainty so therefore if you increase information gain the entropy uh, they are inversely proportional to each other right so increase in the information gain will be uh, meaning will be actually decreasing the entropy because entropy is related with uncertainty information is gain really is related to removal of the uncertainty that means providing the information okay let's come let's come to the example straight away from there you will be um, so this is a data set i have taken this data set is with the age second column is for the uh, competition uh, this is for the age for a particular um, uh, pro, uh, pro, for a particular type of let's say computer part you can say uh, or any other uh, any other you know analogy you can make out of this data but let's concentrate on what is this uh, data not uh, worry about the importance of data and how it is related so this is age this is competition the second uh, feature the third is the type so right. your screen is not possible i'm sorry okay now it is clear yes sir okay so let's let me not do the uh, full screen part so this did let me just try once is it visible now is yes, it sir. okay so this is the data set three three features are there one is age competition and type and this is our uh, target variable which is profit right uh, whenever you are given any data set and you are asked to uh, perform the decision uh, you are asked to um, go for the decision tree algorithm the first job you have to perform is that you have to select the target feature out of the data set now how to select the target feature uh, to select the target feature you have you will select that target feature which separates the data to maximum extent right so i am taking this profit as my target variable right and these are my features age competition and type 
So let's look at how to uh, go about this. These are the formulas that you need to use. This formula is for the total information gain, right? Uh, I will explain this. this. This is the entropy of each feature and this is the gain, information gain. This is total information gain. This is gain uh, for particular attribute. So let us try to solve this. Uh, this is the information. Uh, this is the we need to select the target attribute which best splits the data. So how to calculate this total information gain, which is the information gain of the target attribute? How to do that? Let me. So how many categories are there in this target variable? There are two categories. One is down. The other is up. And how many entries are there for down? Five entries are there for down and five entries are there for up. So uh, that means, let me just come to, I will use this formula minus, uh, because minus sign will be there, P over P plus N, log, uh, same term in the log also, minus N over P plus N, same term in the log also. So this P is first category. So let, let me go. So these are five down, total number of entries are 10. Log to the base two that you must remember. So same uh, term will be there in the log also. This five is the entry for up, right? Uh, five ups are there, total number of entries are 10. So this is log to, to the base two, same in the uh, inside the log also. This will give you the information gain, which is one for the target variable, right? Now we have to, after this, we have to calculate the entropy of all the attributes. And first I have explained you, I have tried to explain the, the calculation of the entropy for age. Now let's look at the age column. What is there in the age column? Three categories are there, old, mid, and new. How many old entries are there? Uh, what we will do is we will we will make a table uh, for this age attribute. This is old, mid, and new. And how many times old uh, is down? How many times old refers to down? It is three. How many times old refers to up? It is zero. From that column, you can understand. Mid refers to down for two times. Mid refers to up two times. New refers to down zero times, new refers to up three times. That you can come from here. Old down, old down, old down. But old is never for up. So from here, with this table is plot. So now I can calculate the information gain for each of these categories. I old will be uh, uh, how many times the old comes? Three times the old comes. Uh, it is three over three, right? For down, how many times uh, old comes? Three times, three over three. Total number of times old is there three. So three over three, log three over three. Plus how many times old comes for up? Zero. But how many total number of olds are there? Three. So this is the information gain of I old. Old category of this age attribute. What is for mid? How many times, how many total entries of mid are there? Four. How many times uh, it comes for down? Two. Two by four, same entry inside the log. How many, uh, how many total entries for mid? Four. How many times mid comes for up? It is two again. So the value comes out to be uh, one here. All right. Uh, this is zero. This is one. What is this three by 10, four by 10? I will explain. This is the probability of old. How many total entries are there in the age column? 10 entries are there. How many times old comes? Three. So that is why the probability of old is three by 10. So this, this formula result has to be multiplied with three by 10. It gives me zero. How many times mid come? What is the probability of mid? It is four by 10. One into four by 10 is 0.4. And how many times new is there using this table? New uh, corresponds to down for zero times new corresponds to up for three times. And what is the probability of new? It is three by 10, right? And these are the information gains of all the three categories in the age column. 
if you sum all the information gains for all the categories of the age, you get the entropy of age, which is 0.4. And this is the information gain of the target attribute. This is the entropy of the age. Similarly, we have to find the entropy. I will come back to this. Um, just I wanted to finish to finish this class. This is the gain. How to find the gain of the uh, age attribute? It is one minus 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is the entropy. So it is 0.6. Similarly, you can find the gain for competition and gain for type. Now, how to start your uh, uh, how to start making the tree? You have to choose the root node. The root node is chosen with maximum information gain. And the maximum information gain is for age. So we will start with that. Right. I think uh, I will I will stop this lecture now because it's already uh, 1213. Uh, we will I will come I will explain the uh, decision tree with this example and I will take one more example also. Right. So we will take two two examples, and one of the example is also uh, there in lab sheet two, uh, which you have to solve basically with pen, and then you have to make PDF and then send it. After that, you have to write the. I will end the lecture here, and I will start the decision tree once again in the next class. Thank you.